Hi, I'm Mark Wheatley, and uh, I'm here with my collaborator, Robert Tunnell. He's also known as Bob Tunnell and Bobby Tunnell over in West Virginia. Bob, you're uh, doing something at a school these days. What's that about? Uh, last, uh, last winter, I was uh, scheduled to shoot something at a uh, soundstage, a new facility in Manesson, Pennsylvania, and I made friends with the people. They'd started a new digital film program. A few months after that, they called me. So it's me. a school. It's it is a, a digital school. film It is program. a school and yeah. a production facility. It's yeah. both. It's yeah. full okay. uh, from prep right through post-production. You can do everything at this place. And um, for digital film anyway, digital filmmaking. And they offered me the directorship, and I was a little scared at first, but I accepted it. And uh, it's the, one of the smartest things I ever did. Do you get a lot of free apples? Lots, yeah, lots, lots of free apples and lots of free uh, equipment to play with. It's yeah. like having your That's own like, the toy box. Yeah, we have stuff. a we have a full size uh, soundstage with a green screen. We're installing the grid now, so we'll have uh, uh, one touch lighting to light up the screen, so we can do all sorts of things. We have a full grip electrical package, with dolly, jib, glide cam. We have. Uh, a mixing room, an ADR, Foley room. We can do all the post sound that we need to do. We have um, beautiful theater, great classrooms, and we have uh, all kinds of editing software and equipment. So, yeah, we're pretty good to go. And uh, in our department, this is a set. Yeah, that we some built. beautiful stuff. That was from uh, your what the, the Edgar Allan Poe thing. Yeah, a video it was for a commercial, and we we also we did a commercial for the school, and we did a video, uh, a short film with Nosferatu, but it's it's the Edgar Allan Poe poem alone. And uh, the guys uh, down at the Tom Sweeney Special Effects School built the set and did a beautiful, beautiful job. That's one of the nice things here. We have the makeup effects school, we have a cosmetology school, we have a graphic design school. And you school. said Tom Sweeney, he was that guy in uh, Night of the Living Dead or something. Uh, right? He directed the remake of Night of the Living Dead. He was the makeup man on Dawn of the Dead and Friday the 13th and Creep Show and Maniac. And, uh, and he's, of course, he's in From Dust Till Dawn and uh, Grindhouse. I and mean, he just. And you guys work together because you both work for George Romero. Way back, way back in the yeah, day, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I first worked with him, uh, well, really worked on, on Creep Show. But you're still making movies here, right? We make, uh, we're shooting all the time. We just did something uh, for one of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Jeff Reed. We did a parody of Night of the Living Dead. It turned out the great, the, the <laughs> students did a great job on that. And uh, it's burning up YouTube right now. Excellent. In fact, all of our stuff is available on YouTube. Um, if you go on YouTube... And the best way to get there, I think, is to go Douglas Education Center. But then you can go there and you can see a lot of the students' work. I mean, one of my students just won the um, won a 24-hour, two-minute horror movie competition. She made a two-minute short called uh, Roadside Assistance. Really good, really funny. So uh, we should talk about uh, Lone Justice. Lone Justice Crash. Because you've got to make time for comics. Crash. Um, it's funny. I, I, it's hard to drive through Manesson without thinking about Crash because it's very much seems rooted in that world of a, of a city that, you know, the industry may be left behind. seen better days. Yeah. 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 And uh, Crash is such an epic story of city and people that have seen their better people days. People are going to think we had a crystal ball. Okay. How would you describe the story? Let's, let's nail it here. You know, it, it, it's at the surface we thought we were going to make a fun pulp. You were going to educate me in pulp. I, I just wanted to do another spider story. What happened was, you know, the characters in Easy Street encountered a situation that, with a homeless man that ended up informing Crash. Right. And I, I thought I think it was really funny is the last week that I was doing the last bit of work, the, uh, the rewrite that you put the gun to my head and made me do. <laughs> was literally when the market was crashing. Right. And so it was just very, very odd. Yeah, well, and here we are. We're doing a pulp story set in the 1930s at the point that the crash is starting to take its toll on everybody. And we see what happens to a two-fisted pulp adventurer when he's faced with having no money. What yeah. if Bruce Wayne lost everything? What if Bruce Wayne lost everything? And that was, that was sort of the way that it started. And we started looking at the story. It was, what if Bruce Wayne lost everything? But there's a part of me that thinks that Bruce Wayne would dig it. Because then he wouldn't have to be exhausted from playing Bruce Wayne. He could right. just, just be Batman all the time. And that's... You know, the true that's, identity. That's what's sort of happening to Octavius Brown, you yeah. know, he, uh, who, is, who is Lone Justice. Now, where did we come up with a name like Octavius Brown? 
Uh, wasn't it? Didn't you have an ancestor named Octavius Brown? Wasn't that <laughs> yeah. how we did it? That's what I do. Well, whenever it, whenever I need named names, after. I shake the family yeah. tree. We have, if, uh, in fact, you know, in um, the Black Forest, people always go, "Man, that's a great name for the villain, Avery Die." It's like it's like my eight times, eight great 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 grandfather Avery Die. Which yeah, I picked I him pick- over Fauntleroy Die, his son, who was actually <laughs> much a good choice. Yeah. Something, of a, something <laughs> of a questionable is character. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, Octavius Brown was my grandfather, and uh, I was named after him. I'm O. B. Wheatley. I think everybody else we sort of we made him up as we went along. Yeah, I think so. So would you end up describing Lone Justice as uh, a pulp adventure, like along the lines of the Shadow or Doc Savage or the Spider, as if it had been written by John Steinbeck? Or Upton Sinclair. There you go. It's a little more, it's a little more paranoid, you know. It's yeah, a little more. Yeah. yeah, you know. I mean, I love Steinbeck, but I wouldn't even presume, you know, to. I mean, although I think, you know, we certainly talked a lot about the Grapes of Wrath and things when we, you know, when we were when we were researching. And I, yeah, you know, it's so difficult when you make that sort of thing. You go, well, imagine if John Ford wrote Batman. Well, or John Ford, uh, John Steinbeck wrote Batman. John Ford would have directed it. Um, <laughs> In, you know, you're not drawing comparisons. I don't mean to do that like you're drawing comparisons. To no, I'm just drawing comic skill sets. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just uh, trying to write something under 200 pages long and failing pretty. That's because I like to draw everything out. <laughs> I mean, you really do. But it's an epic thing. I mean, you. you I like when you, you hit page 180 and Mark's like, you know what's really missing here? <laughs> what could possibly be missing? <laughs> but but seriously, I mean, you're you're um, your scripts when you when you write them and you're very good with structure. But you also tend to write very filmic, um, very epic uh, presentations of the story. And to cram those into a single page, you can't do it. I mean, you have to let the camera travel. (laughs) Well, I think... (laughs) You need those pans. You need those close-ups. You need those distance shots. You do. But also, I think, like, for example, with horror, you know, like when I work with Bo Hampton, for example, I mean, Bo sometimes we'll take a page of script and it becomes eight pages of art because it's the only way to build, you know, fear or... as much tension as one can build in a comic. Uh, I, I mean, I, you and I both tend to go for emotional beats, and mm-hmm. we let things sort of sit there. And it's yeah. it's one of the things that you know, like I, I mean, when before I was in comics and I was reading, I was discovering Bendis and enjoying Bendis so much, and I always loved the way that he just let things breathe. And I think some people miss the point, and then they want to sort of just like have everything just sort of become all bloated and lay out there and be pedantic, and that's right. really not. The point. And I think you're absolutely right. I mean, we set out to do a two fisted pulp adventure, but the moment that was our imagination of what the project would be, but the moment we actually started writing it and keeping our interest up, it became all about heart. And so yeah. it's pulp heart, that's what we've ended up with. <laughs> well, part of it was too, is in the last six or seven years, myself personally, I've just seen a lot of sort of materialism and consumerism rise up. And I think it's just such a hollow thing to hang your hat on. And you know, we're going to find out this holiday season when all of a sudden people just can't buy, buy, buy. And how are they going to feel about themselves right. or, and are worrying about how people are, you know, because they've, they've, we've tied up so much of ourselves into materialism. And that's what's sort of going on in the culture in Crash is you have the haves and the have-nots. And, and I'm not like somebody saying, let's redistribute the wealth. It's not even about that. No, it's no, more about a moral redistribution. Well, it's not even that. From when the very beginning of this thing, it was almost for me, it was like a you are here because... The people who have look at the people who have not and think there's a difference between them. Yeah. On occasion, you'll encounter someone who maybe has inherited a lot of money and, and they'll, they'll sort of look at someone who doesn't have it and say, well, why don't you just go do this? And the character we actually in, in the script, we have yeah, a scene yeah. like this where he says to, uh, a, a character says to, to Lone Justice as Octavius Brown says, you know, well, why don't you just go north to Canada and start an oil field? Mm-hmm. He's like, I, I don't have money to get in a cab to go across town. Yeah. Well, just pick yourself up by your bootstraps. And it's like, oh, you know, he you got boots. boots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, Obi doesn't have boots at that point. All right. Isn't it great that a story that we're doing called Lone Justice Crash is going to appear on Comic Mix? And the story is about people who can't afford to buy anything anymore. And they don't have to because it'll be free. I'm telling you, we're so ahead of the curve here. We're just right, giving stuff away. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, gonna, it's, it's great in, the, in this time, you know, when people maybe don't have an extra buck to do something that we can say, yeah, well, you know, you can go read this huge graphic novel for free in Absolutely. Comic Mix. And, uh, and I'm just grateful to Comic Mix that they've let us do all this stuff and have so much fun. Yeah, well, they're great people to work for. They are. Good seeing you, Bob. Good seeing you too, bro. Yeah.